Dr. Martin Luther King was a minister. They say he knew the Bible, but why he didn't know that Esau was stronger than Jacob? So how is all men created even equal? The Lord didn't create all men equal. So let's get back to his dream. We gonna dissect his whole dream because it ain't according to what the Most High wanted. We can't march for freedom. Okay, let's, uh, it's a, I have a dream that one day on the Red Hills of Georgia, the sons of former slaves and slave, sons of former slaves owners will be able to sit down together at the table of brotherhood. Now let's see what the Lord's saying about us sitting down together in the table of brotherhood. What, who told everybody that the Lord want all people together? Because in the Bible, the Lord said he separated. Let's go to Leviticus chapter 20, verse 24. Now remember, brothers and sisters at home, these not my words. I'm just reading out the Bible. The Lord told me to test this dude's dream, prove his dream to see if his dream is real. If his dream is according to the most high dream, people don't think about what the most high God wants. They think about they man pleases. They please man. Okay, Leviticus chapter 20, verse 24. But I have heard, I, but I have said unto you, you shall inherit that land, and I will give it unto you to possess it, a land that floweth with milk and honey. I am the Lord your God, which have separated you. From other people. So if the Lord said He separated us, the children of Israel, the Negroes, the Native Americans, and the Mexicans from other people, why are we joined together with them? He said He separated us because we was a holy nation to Him. Let's get that in Exodus 19, verse 5 and 6. See, because everybody, everybody think the old covenant is with the whole world. The Lord made the new covenant and the old covenant just with the children of Israel. And that's the Negro, the Native Americans, and the Mexicans of today. We make up the children of Israel. Exodus 19, 5, verse 6. It says, Now therefore, if you will obey my voice indeed and keep my covenant, then you shall be a peculiar treasure unto me above all people, for all the earth is mine. And you shall be unto me a kingdom of priests and a holy nation. These are the words which thou shalt speak unto the children of Israel. See, the Lord wasn't talking to the whole world then. So why everybody keep saying he talking to the whole world when he gave his book? He said, these are the words which you should speak unto the children of Israel. So he never wanted the children of Israel to be uh, integrated with all people. Matter of fact, let's see what this integration has done to our people. Now, this is the book. The Valley of Dry Bones written by Rudolph R. Rilsper. He says, integration meant for blacks unite with the right ways in politics, businesses, and social entertainment. But black people had no bargaining power. So that means we don't integrate with these people. We don't got no power, though. Just like today, we integrated back then, and we still have no power because we follow some man's dream instead of the most high's dream. It's a white was right. It was the best and no less. People thought the integration made it grew in such great proportions that black people underwear their glorious history. Because our glorious history is in this Bible. You want to know why they don't never teach us our history in school? Because they got, that, they got your history right in your face. They just told you these was white men in this book instead of black men. This is your book. It's a... The saying, the saying from 1900 through the late 1950 was, if you are black, get back. Aside from the Moorish Americans, some Muslims, Gavites, and the black Hebrew Israelites, most black Americans believe in integration at any price, even at the cost of their lives at the hands of the Ku Klux Klan. So it was saying these black people, they want to integrate at the cost of any price, even if the Ku Klux Klan was going to kill them. To most black people, integration meant riding in front seats of trains and buses. So you mean to tell me that's all our people want to do? Ride in the front seat of a train and a bus? Y'all people didn't want to own your own trains and buses? But that goes to show you in Hosea 4 and 6, the Lord said, my people are destroyed for a lack of knowledge. He didn't say all people. He said my people. What people on this first earth is destroyed for a uh, lack of knowledge? The Negroes, the Mexicans, and the Native American Indians. Because they, they ain't trying to get no knowledge. It say, to most black people, integration meant riding in front of front seats of trains and buses, eating and sleeping in white restaurants and hotels, going to white theaters and movies, and working in any and all kinds of white businesses in order to be around white people with the purpose of dating and sleeping with them. With this kind of self-hatred and integration people spread like wildfire, the reactions of the black masses were obvious. They thought, we don't want to establish any black business. We want to work in the white ones and advance up into white society. See, that's what happened with my Luther King dream. We didn't want to establish our own businesses. 
we didn't want our own trains. We didn't want our own buses. We want to do, we want to get inside their society with them. Okay, let's let's get back to his uh, dream again. He's saying, I have dreamed that one day even in the state of Mississippi, a state sweating with the heat of injustice, sweating with the heat of oppression, will be transformed into an oasis of freedom and justice. I have dreamed that my four little children will one day live in a nation where they will not be judged by the color of their skin, but by the content of their character. Let's see if this part of his dream came true. Because he said he have a dream that one day we won't be judged by the color of our skin, but by the content of our character. Now, this is the black man versus the nigga. Now, we finna show you how his dream came to pass. It say the black man versus the nigga, and I think it's written by some Arab. I don't know, because I can't pronounce the name. It say, now the difference between the black man and the nigga is simple. The black man is like everyone else. No difference except skin color. A nigga is someone who was born or raised in a bad neighborhood, has partial grass or English language, is ignorant to want to leave these neighborhoods has very little judgment over what is right and wrong, and generally commits crimes for any reason he wants to, especially money. So that's trying to say basically, cause I guess I, I know I'm a nigga then cause I'm from the projects, I'm from Lamar and God. But they saying the difference between a black man and, and a nigga, the nigga, the black man just like everybody else, he just his skin black. But the nigga, he come from the project. He use bad language and he commits crimes. Now let's read on what this dude do, how he, uh, Describes the black man and a nigga. He said, a bunch of friends I consider black man and less friends I consider niggas. Because a black man you can trust and a nigga you can't let know, know where you live for fear of burglary. It's that simple. So look, look how that part of his dream came true. He said, he said, let me read it from the top again. He said, I have a dream that my four little children will one day live in a nation where they will not be judged by the color of their skin, but by the content of their character. That came true because now we don't get judged by the color of our skin, but by the content of our character. Yeah. Okay, let's read on. It's saying, I have a dream. I have a dream today. I have a dream that one day down in Alabama, with this vicious racist, with this government having his lips dripping with the words of interposition and nullification, one day right there in Alabama, little black boys and black girls will be able to join hands with little white boys and white girls and sisters and brothers. Now, did we just read in Leviticus chapter 20, verse 23, that the Lord has separated the Israelites from all people? Let's go back to Leviticus chapter 23, and I mean Leviticus chapter 20, verse 23, and we're going to go to Leviticus chapter 20, verse 26, and we're going to get more proof. I mean, Leviticus chapter 20, verse 24. It says, But I say unto you, you, can, you shall inherit their land, and I will give it unto you to possess it, a land that flowed with milk and honey. I am the Lord your God, which have separated you from other people. So why is this dude wanting us to be integrated with other people, and the Lord said he separated us from other people? Now let's go, to, let's jump down to 26. It says, And ye shall be holy unto me, for I the Lord am holy, and I have servant you from other people that you should be mine. Servant means to separate. Separate, to cut and part, to take the part. The Lord didn't want every, he didn't want the children of Israel, like especially to be uh, with Gentile nations and to be learning from them and to be integrated. We're supposed to be learning our own history.